Two weeks ago, while Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg was out touting his new stock, and banks backing the deal were raising the offering price, some of those same banks were quietly cutting revenue forecasts for the company. At Morgan Stanley, the lead firm on the offering, an analyst, reportedly Scott DeWitt, sent out a cautionary note that Facebook's outlook was weakening, but only to a select group of the bank's top clients. This should not have happened. Absolutely not. I mean, there's no debating. This is a misadventure of epic proportion. Max Wolf is an economist and senior analyst with Greencrest Capital. The real issue here is that Morgan Stanley didn't tell everyone. Absolutely. It's either everyone or no one. And if there were some voices of skepticism, especially seeing how things have gone, I think everyone should have heard those. Massachusetts officials today subpoenaed Morgan Stanley over the analyst Facebook report. In Washington, SEC Chairman Mary Shapiro said... Uh, but there are issues that we need to uh, look at specifically with respect to uh, Facebook. Banks underwriting a stock offering generally are barred from issuing written recommendations until 40 days after it starts trading. This was supposed to be the, the chance to restore the public's faith in the public markets and in Wall Street. And instead, it's been a reminder of everything people suspected, feared or hated about public markets and Wall Street. Morgan Stanley, in a statement tonight, said it acted in compliance with all applicable regulations. But one veteran of the IPO market called this a travesty. Facebook, he said, has become a laughing stock. Anthony, investors who got in on the ground floor are now headed for the basement. Is this the worst initial public offering ever? <laughs> Maybe the worst high-profile one we've seen, Scott. There's been a black eye for just about everyone involved. First of all, for Facebook itself, for the NASDAQ, which had technical problems at the opening and now says it shouldn't have opened the stock. It basically wasn't ready. And now the banks as well. But the biggest losers, of course, the investors. Anthony, thanks very much.